when somebody turns around and says, do you think you could do this? You always say yes. Yes. Mm, Did y'all hear that? You may not have an answer in that moment, but say yes. Get in there. Try it. The worst that can happen is you feel silly for just a second. But as Mm. I've always told you, always let your excited be louder than your scared. Always. Come on now. This is the Kim Rivera Show. Let's just go on and spill the tea. This is one of the realest persons I've ever met. My mission is to encourage every single woman. We're here to lift y'all up. There's no one more effective than moms. You mess with the bull, you gonna get the horns. I need coffee, I need Jesus, and I need therapy. (laughs) (laughs) If you can bring a smile to people's faces, why would you not? True confidence is knowing who you are and why you're here. Hey, y'all, this is Kim Gravel, and this is The Kim Gravel Show. In this season, we are leveling up our lives, and we're stepping into our purpose, our calling, I like to call it, and we're going to do it together. Um, Today's show, Zach, what's up? Let me just say, hey, Zach. I love your new mic little, what's that thing called? I don't know. You have a new thing on your mic. It looks awesome. It's a thingamajiggy. A thingamajiggy. It's a thingamajiggy. That's the technical term for it. It's a thingamajiggy. This this makes us legit. Yeah. That's now we're a real podcast. (laughs) Like we weren't before, but now we before, are, and it feels really just, good. This is legit. No, <laughs> I, I love it because this podcast is like such a passion for me because I, I get to, you know, say this message of leveling up your life and being confident and walking in your calling, and also get to interview people who are actually doing that. And it's it's so funny, Zach, because I say this all the time. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not this person that has all this you know, wealth of academia knowledge, what I have to offer is quite simple, but real. I mean, it's that life experience of things that I have gone through, the peaks, the valleys, the highs, the lows, that's enabled me to live a life that is fulfilled and that is for me and and my calling and my purpose. And We've just had so many of you reach out, and I just want to take a moment and say, please, continue to do so. Not only are you encouraging us, but you're letting us know what's resonating with you, and and you're letting us feel like Zach and I feel like we're not alone in this journey of leveling up our lives. We all want more out of this life that we get one shot at, so if you can reach out, you can call us Zach, and we can put all that information, you know, in, in the podcast, but you call us, email us. You can go to the Kim Gravel show.com. Is that it, Zach? It is. So it's Kim Gravel show.com and okay. our voicemail line. And you can just call and leave us a voicemail. Us. We might play it on the show. We might call you back. We might invite you on the show. Okay. Yeah. Um, the number is 404-913. Let me get it right. 6460. So give us a call. But here's the other thing. Can I just say, we get like a ton of fan mail. We get so many emails from people and we get like way less reviews of the show. So if you like the show, if the show is meaningful for you, go on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, if you're on Spotify, if you're on whatever podcast platform and just rate and review the show. It means a lot to us. It helps new people find us. And it's amazing. And like write us emails too, but it's like, we get Do so many emails and we want everything. Yeah, we want it all. Yeah, I, I get, you know, I'm greedy, honey. At my age, <laughs> I take what I can get. I just ask for it. You know, it, it's, that saying you have not because you ask not, I'm asking for it. But th- as the book is coming out, my book is launching April 25th, Collecting Confidence. It really is my journey into collecting confidence and how you can do that for yourself. And that's what we're talking about today. Um, Mary DeAngelis, who is such a powerhouse host at QVC, her journey and how she got to where she is now living her best life in leveling up her life and living in her calling. She's going to share with us today. Um, You don't want to miss this. Mary DeAngelis is coming up right after this, y'all. Hey, y'all, Kim Gravel here, and I'm excited about... My book that's releasing very, very soon called Collecting Confidence. And I wrote it because I want everyone to feel confident and be the confident person that you already are and walk in it. Um, I'm hoping that when you read it, you're going to be encouraged. You're going to be inspired. You're going to laugh a little. And also you're going to take 
my stories of my life, the experiences, the ups, the downs, the ins and outs, the highs, the lows. And it's been that thread in my life that has given me the confidence to be who I was meant to be. And I wanted to do the same for you because you already have it inside of you from the day you were born to right now. It's time to start where you are to become everything you were meant to be. And in Collecting Confidence, it will encourage you to do just that. Collecting Confidence comes out April 25th, and you can pre-order it now wherever books are sold. Let's all do this thing together and walk boldly, y'all, in your collected confidence. All right, everybody. I am telling you, I've been looking forward to having this woman on the podcast for, I know, over a year. Um, You know her as my ride or die, my Wednesday BFF on our static show at QVC. Uh, In the Kitchen with Mary is her own show. She does Saturdays at 11 a.m. on QVC 2. She's got another show on Tuesday called It Takes Two with Mary and Sandra, who would have yet to be on, so I'm kind of upset. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, she is a, She comes from a strong military family. She's lived all over the world. She went from answering the phones at a QVC call center to one of the powerhouse QVC hosts. Um, And she's a cancer survivor. She's beat thyroid cancer. And I just remember her going through that, the prayers that went up for this woman. But you love her and know her. Mary DeAngelis! Woo! (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen. Mary. (laughs) Angelis, Angelis. Isn't that fantastic, Mary? That was amazing. Oh my gosh, Mary. I loved it. That's my jam. Is that not you made over? Yeah. And all the beatbox, I did uh, it myself. You're so good at it. Just kidding. You did it yourself. Oh my gosh. Every time we hang out, I learn that you have a new amazing skill. <laughs> Listen, we're so glad you're here. I'm telling you, Mary. It has been a long time coming, but everybody knows and loves you. And I'm so glad to introduce you to this pod audience because this podcast audience, because you are truly, I mean, I'm going to give you all your accolades. Just go on and take them. Don't start crying. You are just such a powerhouse when it comes to a living your purpose, living what you're called to do and a woman of confidence. I remember stopping you in the halls of QVC. Do you remember this? Yeah, and I said, girl, I loved it. you are all that in a bag of chips. I remember stopping going, Mary, there's big, big things for you. Do you remember that? And you had just been, I think, diagnosed, had you just been diagnosed with thyroid cancer or you were coming over it? Yeah. I mean, I, gosh, I remember that moment um, because you stopped me in the hallway and I remember I was just like, oh my gosh, that's Kim Gravel. Please don't act like a giant dork. And, um, and, <laughs> And then when you unleashed and you were like, girl, and came in with all the fingers out and you were like, you are amazing. You have got this. You are doing such an incredible job. And I had, I had just been diagnosed at the time. And I mean, I I come from a strong family. And so I knew I really did have an overwhelming sense that I was going to be okay. I knew the road was kind of long ahead. But um, when you said that, it was just like a little bit of extra boost to kind of get me through a a tumultuous part of, of life that was going to be coming up next. And I just thought, okay, that's what real girlfriends do. It's, yeah. You don't have yeah. to be psychic. You don't have to, I'm not saying you have Lord, to be no. able to read minds, but to be able to just go up and uplift isn't just important because that's what we should be doing, but you never know when somebody needs it most. And I needed it most then. And you just, that was how our friendship started. And I thought, oh yeah, it can. And if it only gets better from here. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, well, it's just going to get better. Uh, and this is a woman who introduced me, made me fall back in love with a hot dog. I mean, she <laughs> is. <laughs> you uplifted me through my battle of thyroid cancer. I you. Intru- reintroduced you to the hot dog. I think that's easy. You made me fall back in love with a hot dog. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, honestly. Mm-hmm. But Mary, Thank let's you. talk about you because <laughs> I think what people don't know about you is that you are such a fierce woman of confidence. And and I want to talk about your confidence journey and how you have really stepped into living your life's calling and purpose with confidence. Mm. Can we talk about, I know you were, you were a flight attendant. You, you Mm -hmm. traveled the world, right? You come from a military family and we're going to hear a little bit about what your dad used to always tell you a little bit later. 
<laughs> but can you talk about your QVC journey? Because a lot of people yeah. have these big dreams and big goals. Can you tell me how all that came about? You're so sweet. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's been an incredible space. So I joined QVC in 2007 in the call center. So I was working as a flight attendant, um, had some health things going on. So I couldn't fly anymore and I had to find something to do. So I went to my supervisor at the airline, told her, she said, stay right here, left the room, came back in and said, I just got you a job in the office. And so, I mean, that's what strong women do, right? We bend over backward for each other. So she got me a job in the office and I worked in the office for a while in management for the airline. Um, I really just wanted a company that I could grow with and I was ready to kind of figure something out for my life a little bit more concrete, a little bit more growth oriented. So found QVC. How did you find QVC? So when I was a stewardess, um, <laughs> we were told that when you are on the overnights to leave your TV on, if you leave your hotel room, you're taught that in training. And they said a good option when you leave, because it sounds like somebody's in the room if you leave TV on. And so they said wow. a good option is a good option is QVC because it sounds like people are inside having a conversation. Oh. And so that's how I met QBC was in flight attendant training. Um, isn't that <laughs> wild? No, that I is know. brilliant. Yeah. And it was a really good piece of advice. Um, but so I, I was like, wait a minute, isn't QBC around here? So I went and saw the company, met this amazing woman um, and got an interview, got hired into the call center. Well, at the airline, I was supervising and managing about 300 people and at QVC, they said, listen, you got the job, but we we have some bad news. You're going to be managing the biggest team uh, on the floor. And I said, okay, so how many people are we talking? They're like, 26. <laughs> Is that okay? I was like, I'm trying not to cry. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, so it was just, it was. So, so did you ever like have aspirations, dreams of live performing or, you know, doing any kind of like doing TV, producing it, being on air, like, because yeah. a lot of people, you know, they have these dreams and maybe they, they tuck them away, you know, and, and yeah. forget about them, especially when we're young. But yeah. did you ever have that inner desire or, or did you just bump into it? In this case, I, I sort of bumped into it, but I did okay. theater as a little kid because my mom Got it is a saint um and she had this spastic child and um she knew that i had a uh, really high i i have oh gosh i mean my energy is all over the place i need it's so I, good so much energy and so she said i was trying to find something that you could do uh that would engage you but also kind of burn off some energy at the same time sports <laughs> weren't doing it they didn't run long enough <laughs> um, recess wasn't doing it. Cause I mean, I was digging, you know, the swings out of the ground. So like, let's get her something to do. So they got me into theater. So I did the King and I, I did sound of music. Um, so I did Peter background. Pan. I do. So, um, a lot of singing in our family, everybody sings. We're like the, you know, American version of the Von Trapps. It's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, so that I've always done theater as a little kid. And then, uh, I, tr I've treated my entire life like a lounge lizard. <laughs> It's true. I remember being in the officer's club when I was six years old. I started, I had a loose tooth and I went table to table in the dining room telling each table that I had a loose tooth and would they like to discuss it? And, uh, and I remember my mom was like, what is she doing? And my dad was just like, let her run. And, uh, and then my mom, we went into the bathroom, the tooth came out and I came back to the table and around my dinner plate were quarters. The whole dining room had lined up quarters Around my so I mean I've treated my entire life like a lounge lizard. S Sweetie, you've been selling stuff. I mean, any you've sold <laughs> your tooth. No wonder, one, no wonder your shows are so successful. You've been selling. And, if you sell your own dead tooth out your mouth, and made two twenty five. <laughs> if yeah, I, I may, two twenty five. That's two Reese's. You've been selling a dead tooth. You can do anything. <laughs> But I mean, so became a producer, and then there was this new yeah. thing called Facebook that we were reading comments <laughs> from on air at QVC. And one day, the person that was going to read the comments wasn't able to be there, and they said, "Well, she talks a lot. What about her?" And um, and so they—that's how I read my first Facebook comment on air on a show called My Time with Mary Beth. So you didn't go through the audition process at that point. They just snapped you off the floor. 
They were like, she brushed her wow. teeth and she talks a lot. Let's get her on. Were you scared? Yes. Right before okay. we went on air, one of the guys that um, I used to work with said, hey, by the way, it's really bad manners if you look into the camera. So just read the piece of paper and then go. <laughs> and I was like, what? Is he messing with me? <laughs> and uh, so I did. I literally I got on air and I was like, Mary sure. Beth, Susan, Susan in uh, Wisconsin said she loves your show <laughs> and we love Temptation. Like that was it. That was America saw this. And then they cut away, and that was my big debut. You did bump into it, but you'd been preparing for this your whole entire life, really. I was ready. I mean, there's. I think that there's a natural tendency to talk. I think that um, I come from a strong leadership background. My father, as an officer, uh, when you grow up as a military kid, you have to take responsibility for yourself pretty young um, because you are a direct reflection of your parents. And so you understand that at a very young age. So I had that yeah. to... Um, but I, I just, there was something about the energy at QBC that also was a confidence builder because yeah. what company that size is going to say, yeah, I think she's got a little something. Let's see what happens. I mean, who does that? It's like New York. If you can make it at QVC, you can make it anywhere just because it's well live television and yeah. they saw it in you. Okay. So when you started doing that, so t yeah. tell us to the journey to get how you got here today, because you are truly one of the number one hosts at QVC. Oh, 50% of my job at that point was reading comments on his show. And then 50% of my job was actually producing the show. So um, mm. the comments part, the relationship, the friendship grew. And that part kind of became like, well, that's entertainment in the show. So we sort of built on it from there. But it was it was one of those deals where, and I, I've said this to you for a long time, along the way, it's not going to be written out for you. A lot of these moments aren't going to be scripted or, you know, there's not going to be an outline for it. But when somebody turns around and says, do you think you could do this? You always say yes. Yes. Mm, Y'all hear that? You may not have an answer in that moment, but say yes, get in there, try it. The worst that can happen is you feel silly for just a second. But mm. as I've always told you, always let your excited be louder than your scared. Always. Come on Always, now. always. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, you we could to. just stop right here if we had to. I mean, that is so <laughs> true. I mean, Do. that's what that's what I love about your story, Mary, is there's such mm -hmm. depth and authenticity. Talk to mm -hmm. me about what you think it takes. And, and we're talking about QVC, but also the bigger picture of success, because success looks different yeah. to everybody. Everybody has their own. I say get into yourself, get into your calling, get into your purpose and let yeah. the su success unfold. But don't you think, like, why do you think you're such a good connector and host? And, you know, own that, because you know you are, and yeah. I'm saying it, so it's not like you're bragging on yourself. And plus, it yeah. ain't bragging if you can back it up. But <laughs> what do you Wait, think? Wait, who said that in your family? My daddy. Your dad, yeah, I love to, that. He used to I say, honey, if it ain't bragging if you can back it up. And it's just, <laughs> what makes you walk in that confidence when you're doing what you do? And honestly, this can, this can apply to anybody in their life and, and anything that they do. Oh, you're so sweet. I mean, I think that I have fallen down more times than I have glided through unscathed. And I think that the choice that you make after you fall down to live in a place of positivity matters. Um, we're all going to fall down, no matter whether you're an accountant, whether you're an executive, whether, you know, whatever your job, you're a nurse, whatever your job is, there's going right. to be little and big moments where, ugh, Either you yeah. flubbed it yeah. or life circumstances made the situation fall, whatever it is, it's going to happen. And it is a choice to decide where you're going to live in your headspace after that. And I live with two very positive people. I was raised by two very positive people. My dad, whoo, he's all jazz hands and leadership. And that man can zing a sentence out at you in a moment that just levels your brain because it's so smart. Um, my mother is a listener and she's a planner mm. and she's um, a strong human being and the smartest person. You, you don't, by the way, ever watch Jeopardy with my mother? She oh, answers Lord. every she's one single of those. question. She's one yes. of those. 
Yeah, yes. I know those people. And, so, and you're just like going, what the what? Yeah, and those are my two halves. And so yeah, yeah, those two influence. people, you know, the jazz hands and the listening um, was how I was raised. And so I remember um, my dad saying to me one time, you know, I said, I got, I had gotten really irritated with something that happened at school. And I said, and I can't get myself out of it. Mm. And he said, well, he said, if you act like something long enough, eventually you will just be it. He said, so if, if that is irritating to you and he goes, just imagine yourself being over it. What would it feel like? Would you feel lighter physically? Would you want to go read something? Like, what is it that would, how would you act if you were feeling better? And I told him, I said, well, I'd probably, I loved comic books. So I said, I'd probably go read a comic book or play outside or something. He's like, well, just go do that. He goes, and then once you start doing that thing, you'll be in a better mood and, um, or you'll be over it or you'll be whatever it is. So, I mean, they taught me young and in different ways that you have a choice Mm, when you you fall, do you want to settle into that, that ditch and live there? Accept it. Right. Do you want to just, that happened, that was on me or that was on life and then act like you're on to the next step until it's solidified and you're living in it. Mary, I, I, I can't agree with your parents and you more. I mean, it's it's mm. a choice. Life is a choice. And, and we are so blessed to have the freedom to choose. Yes. Um, but yes. I want to talk to you about your authenticity because I think to mm. me, that's probably your biggest superpower. Mm. And I always say yes. everyone has one or at least a handful of superpowers and some do it. I think so. um, Just they don't know they're doing it and they just do it. But there's something special about someone who understands their superpower and honors it, respects it, moves from it and, and, you know, has this gratefulness for it. And I think you're Mm. one of those people because your superpower is truly authenticity. I mean, you are very authentic, and that's why I think you're so popular on QVC and so successful in life. I think everybody wants to be authentic, truly. I think everybody wants to be seen and heard as who they really are. What what gives you the confidence, Mary, to live from that place of the authentic you? Thank you. And I, I mean, you coming from an authentic woman, that means a lot. Uh, And I I think uh, love. I mean, it all comes down to that word and whether I am very lucky to be loved by other people in my life. I'm loved by my parents. I'm loved by my husband. Um, But it also comes from inward. You have to love yourself. And that's easy to say, isn't it? Easy to say, because there could be a lot of factors involved that make that not possible. Um, But for me... I am my very best. I'm my very, I'm my own very best friend. And oh, um, no, 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 don't go over that. <laughs> like, we got to stop it. No, you can't say It's over true. That. It's true. I am. I'm my very own best that, friend. I'm, tell I'm us, the first dig deeper one. deeper in that, Mary. I'm the first one on the scene when something goes wrong. Um, I <sighs> am the person to chime in when it seems like the whole world's laying on my forehead. Um, I have been here since day one living in this body, uh, and I have seen it at its worst, and I have seen her at her best. And I got to tell you, I am proud of what this has been through. And it's not just about those catastrophic events that happen in life to all of us, whether it is surviving uh, cancer or it is you know, getting through um, a a death or getting through a job loss or huge, awful things that happen to us in our life. It's also about the, you just stopped and did the right thing in that moment. I've seen all those moments that this body has been through and I'm still here. And I think every day that you can wake up and say, I'm still here today. I'm going to try a little bit harder than yesterday or today I'm going to give myself a break. And everywhere in between, I'm proud of each and every one of those. And you have to say those kind of things to yourself. You have to, because the only person at the end of the day that's looking in the mirror and going, 
how did it go is is you so i've i have always been um my best my best friend as as wild as that sounds mary that's just so i mean you've just helped so many people just by saying that like it's mm. so true it's hard to do like you said it's easy to say and hard to do for sure um, but for that sure. is that is that is how to be truly authentic and i I, mm. I think that's what we all are searching for i mean i'll tell you i i have not shared this story i don't think ever um just because it's it's hard to get into on live television but I remember when I was a little girl, I was diagnosed with ADHD. And one of my school teachers uh, said, we need to talk to your mom. And so got a letter home, talked to mom. And my mom came in and I remember I was sitting out in the hallway and my mom was in there chatting with, I think a teacher and a principal. I'm a little fuzzy on the exact details of like who was in the room with my mom, but I could hear what they were saying. And they said to my mom, they were proposing all these things. We've got to get her to sit down in the classroom, which I can't argue with. That is true. Um, but they, we've got to, we've got to, and they described a whole bunch of things. We've got to rein her in. We've got to rein in this. Ooh. We've got to rein in this. We've got to rein in this. And my mother said, we're not mm. doing any of those things. And they said, well, why not? And she said, because I would miss her. I would miss her. And I heard that come out of my mother's mouth. And I remember sitting there thinking, you know what? That's pretty cool that she said that. But I would miss her too. Mm. I mean, I'm fun. I'm loud. Sometimes I interrupt people. And sometimes I, you know, say wild things. But I also take really good care of my family, my friends. And I'm still here. So yeah, I loved hearing my mom say, I would miss Are you her. crying? Are you tearing up? A little up? bit. I know, Look. me too. I know, because I see it tearing up because that I would miss her too. You, that meant you the world be great to me. TV. <laughs> I know. TV. When, when you say, let's rein her in, isn't that, I know, mm. Mary, I don't because I'm going to lose my lashes. I, you know, <laughs> I'm going to cry my lashes off. I know, I almost um, ate off all my lip gloss. Hold on. Put it back on, girl. Put it back on. But, no. So, Don't you think that's what is happening with young yes. people today is we're yeah. trying to rein them in. That's and such you know, a there, brilliant, profound thing. Well, there are things that you can, you know, everybody's different. I totally believe that. I, sure, I think that sure. I've had to learn a lot of things over the years to kind of stay focused, stay on track and sure, to be tools. listen better, all those things. But that yeah. takes time. And it, and quite frankly, a lot of classrooms don't have that flexibility um, to be able to offer that. But I will say hearing the most important thing out of that whole thing was hearing my mother say, I will miss, I would miss her. We're That's not amazing. doing any of that because I would miss her. And I just thought, first of all, I, I tease my parents all the time and say, I'm so lucky to be born to you too. Because I was, if I was born to anybody else, I'd probably be in jail. <laughs> um, I said, but I also love the fact that she meant that wholeheartedly. And I think that for anybody who is listening or who is watching and no matter what your chemical makeup, no matter what your physical makeup, Background, your emotional makeup, yeah. you have a place here. And yeah, it now. and and I don't want to rein you in. I know nobody, mm -hmm. you know, that's on your screen right now wants to rein you in. And if there's if there's something that people think isn't good enough, it is. It is, it is, it is. It's, that's your, whatever you think isn't good enough as you grow up or as you mature, you find out is actually your superpower. And I think superpower. hearing her say, I would miss her turned my, you know, kind of energy all over the place mm -hmm. into my superpower. And I think that's the authenticity right there. It is, it is. Your mother gave you permission saying yeah. that gave you permission to be you because I think when, when the, and, and look, the teachers and society and social media and pop, 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 maybe the corporate yeah. structure that you're under, maybe a marriage that you're in. Okay, fill in the blank of whatever your struggle is because we all got them. Okay. We got them. They're all different, them, but, but we all got them. But every, all of those, I'm going to, I need to rein you in messages that we get are those limiting messages that fit into a narrative that is not yours. Yeah. Like, yeah, I love how you write your own story and you do it and you tell it so colorfully and relatably, if that's even a word. And, it, you know, now. you you connect. And I love your motto. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're so you're wicked smart. You're wicked, fiercely quick witted. Oh. But can we do this I every love, day? 
Yeah, call me, girl. Call me. Okay. Um, <laughs> your motto of anything worth doing is worth overdoing. I think that's the that's the juxtaposition <laughs> to your let's rein her in. You're like, oh heck no, uh uh-uh. uh, we're not gonna rein in. We're gonna go forward and flow. The first time I said it, I think I, d- I said it to be funny, but I'm a big believer in anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Um, I love it. Because if if my show, listen, this is just to share a little bit how that motto fits into life. If my show starts at 7 a.m., I'm in that studio four hours prior. I'm in there at 3 a.m. Steam it and steam in your clothes. That d- <laughs> <laughs> She steams her own clothes, people. Yes, she does. Um, there's there's a whole other podcast right there. But uh, <laughs> the <laughs> if I signed up for a job, if I said I am going to be able to fulfill all these job requirements, I'm going to do those and then some. I mean, I right. am aggressive with my work day. I am. And I, I've said this many times in interviews. Uh, maybe not all this, but I'm giving you a summation. I'm not the smartest person in the room. I'm not the prettiest. Mm. I'm not the tallest. I'm not the fastest. But nobody works harder than I do. Come on with it. And I may have a couple speed bumps at the beginning or the end or in the middle or whatever, just like human beings do. But I can assure you out of the gate without hesitation and 100% confidence that I am the hardest working person in that room. And if I'm going to sell you a sheet... I'm going to know how it's woven. I'm going to know the um, skew number of the loom that it was made on. (laughs) I mean, I am all in. And so, yeah, that's a lot for a lot of people. But why do you think, why do you think you do that, Mary? Where do do you think that comes from originally? Because I've got a theory. I think that that is a piece of confidence. I can feel lighter in my own skin Come on with if it. If I can confidently share with you everything that I'm supposed to be presenting, even if we never yep. get to it, even if we never cover a detail, I always share with teammates that the reason that I can go on air and play for a second is because I can yank us right back to wherever we need to go. Um, yep. Because I'm covered, I've covered all the facts, I've covered all the details, and I have them in my toolbox. We may not need them, but I'm ready. And that's confidence. Being ready is confidence. I mean, you're you're just, I swear, we're just so simpatico. But I, <laughs> I I will say to you too, I think, I think it also, I think the foundation of that anything worth doing is worth overdoing. I think just from what I've witnessed being your friend and working with you on a very successful show at QVC. Mm is that it comes from a grateful heart too. And just, I know that says you're like, what? But but follow me here because when you are grateful to have opportunity, I think, I think a lot of people miss the boat there. When you are so genuinely appreciative and grateful for an opportunity that has come your way, you will work hard. You will overdo the work, like you're saying, to not only keep the opportunity, but to honor that opportunity. I agree. I mean, you know, I've been in jobs that made me feel less than. Um, I've been in places in my life that have made me feel less than. But when things seem especially bad and then you take a leap into something different, you know, that that grass is always greener phrase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do you think all the good has been hiding? What? It, that's it. So, I mean, when when you do take that leap and you jump into the unknown, I don't know anything about this job, this town, this company. I don't know anything about it. If things are so bad over here, where do you think all the good is? And so it's over there in the unknown. And that's that's the gratitude. And my husband thinks, I, I mean, every once in a while I say something to him that makes him just completely lose it. I'll sit there quiet for a little while and go, Snick. Isn't it great to have shoes? And my husband just go what? And I'll say, I'm grateful for sh- for shoes. I'm grateful for the two pair of shoes. Especially with my bunions, door. honey. With my Thank flat you. feet and bun, but, I got to have an arch. But I think doing a gratitude inventory in your own uh-huh. life is is uplifting. I'm I'm grateful. Yes. I found this headband in the headband the is bathroom. rocking. By the way. 
I found this upstairs in the bathroom and I was like, I'm grateful for the headband. I mean, it, it, anybody who's listening may go, okay, they have officially lost their minds. No, Try it I, I say one that time. About you. Yep. Try it one I've time because you. when you start being grateful for, I don't have this and they have this and oh my gosh, I'm not as great as this other person or thing or whatever. Take a gratitude inventory of what you have. And I guarantee you by the end of that list, there will be at least one cell in your brain that goes, all right, all right, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty well. That's, that's, that's well, pretty good. You've just, y'all, I'm telling you, there's been four or five nuggets everybody needs to write down. I'm going to go back and listen to this. I'm going to steal it. I'm just going to go and tell you right now on, on national list. TV. I'm stealing it, okay? Um, and don't sue me because I ain't got nothing anyway, so Sorry. don't even try it. And my memory's not that great, so I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember nothing. <laughs> I want to I wanna talk about your thyroid cancer because yeah. I, I heard you say on a show that you have to advocate for yourself Like when you Mm, think something's wrong or you have that gut intuition, because there's a lot of people that struggle with a cancer diagnosis or a health diagnosis or a financial, you know, uh, you know, diagnosis. There's that we struggle with hard things. What do you mean, Mary, when you said you advocated for yourself? Mm, I I am super passionate about it. I mean, um, that my, another, another thing that my dad said to me growing up was people who don't know you cannot create your life. And that really hit when I was a kid. I got, that was one of those that he didn't have to say a lot. He said it to me one time and it, and it hit. Um, I was washing my makeup off one day after work and I felt a a knot in my throat and um, it was little, it was little, little, little. And I went to one doctor who said, it's just stress. And I said, it's not. And I thought, but immediately I just got another doctor. I'm just going to a different doctor. So then another appointment, I went to another doctor. I feel it, but I think that um, we'll wait on a biopsy. I can get you in for a biopsy in about another six weeks. And that's not outrageous. That's not outrageous. Um, But it's, it, didn't feel right to me. And so um, I found a third doctor and that doctor got me in for a biopsy the very next day. And they said, we're going to take three samples from three different areas. We're going to wait and see how they come back. The very first sample that they took came back cancerous. And so the you fact, were young. oh yeah. Um, but the fact that I knew immediately that that first doctor was wrong. Um, the second doctor was pretty close. So technically I could have just stayed there and and been perfect perfectly fine. But again, I've known this body since day 1. Come and on. I know when something is wrong and I have confidence that there was something wrong going on. I I didn't quite feel different yet, just a little bit, but not enough to warrant being that dogmatic about it. But Um, you cannot in one part of your life say that you're a big fan of yourself and not advocate for yourself medically. How do you trust yourself so much? How have you, because a lot of people want this kind of confidence, because to me, you're an uber confident woman. Mm -hmm. How do you trust that? What are some of the practices you do or what what has made you say, you know, that's not right. I'm going to trust myself. You've got a yeah. professional doctor here telling you otherwise, but you're like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. What, yeah, yeah. What, what things have you done? What can people actively do, Mary? I think confidence comes, um, it's, it takes time, but I think it too, um, it's, it's a, it's a multi-layered thing. Um, you have to be kind to yourself. You just have to, if you're in the habit of not, then you have to make a conscious choice to practice being nicer to yourself. Yeah. The other thing too, is when you fail, it's not the end of the story. When you, I fail. Oh my gosh. I, I, I've had so many wild jobs that I have been so bad at y'all. I was the worst waitress in the world. Um, you know why? Because <laughs> because by the time I shut up and got your food to you, it was cold. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have tried. I tried to be a secretary one summer. I was. I was. I uh, got a job as somebody's admin. I can type about negative six words a minute. Like it is. There's no <laughs> chance. I like big nails. That was a problem. So like I can't. There are so many things that I was bad at. But you know what? They're 
funny stories and it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I let anybody down. It doesn't mean that, you know, it wasn't your spot. World, it wasn't your spot. The world crashed and burned. It was, it's part of your journey and it's okay to fail. So have I you ever gotten s- fired? Have you ever gotten fired? I'm trying to think. I, I have never been fired. Just making sure going through the inventory. <laughs> I have never been, that says a lot. I have, yeah. I have never been fired. Um, but I have you, have, have you mutually parted ways? Yes. <laughs> yes. I can, I can tell you, I worked at a Mediterranean restaurant years oh, and Lord years ago mercy. and the food was out of this world. It was so good. Sure. And I remember the owner who was the nicest, most patient man came up to me and said, I don't know any other way to put this. <laughs> I just need you to be faster. (laughs) And I remember thinking, what are you talking about? Like it was just the most ridiculous thing. And then a week later, okay, I need you to be a little faster than that. And then a week later, (laughs) just a little. So when I told him I was leaving and I had to move on, he was like, gosh, that's a shame. Okay. Like it was just the most. We hate to lose you, but bye. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't let the door hit you. Um, but I, I think that those failures are also a part of what yeah. makes you um, important in whatever you find your your piece to be later on. Um, not every job, it, introverts and extroverts are just as important. Um, oh, I, I if if I surrounded myself with all people like myself, it would. Oh my gosh. I mean, I would need naps. <laughs> well, I think um, I think people were shocked that our show yeah. was so kismet because, th- but but I will tell you why I think it's so special because we're both extroverted, we're both loud, we both have ADHD, we're both you know, we could go on a rabbit a trail formula. and dig ourselves. Yeah, we could just like go down a rabbit hole faster than Alice. But it's just it's like I think it's because you do you so well. And you are so confident in what you do, and I mm. do me so well. It's a mutual respect and love for yeah. that authenticity that we have for each other and for our mm. girl that watches. Yeah. We love our I, sisterhood. Yeah. Oh, desperately. And and that's honestly that's the biggest thing. So get people at least one or two in your life if you can that you trust and keep them close. Um, because that sounding board is so important. If you have a whole pack of girlfriends, then you're lucky and hang on to them. But honestly, people that don't know you can't create your story. And that was the biggest thing to me. I mean, I, that person across the room who you think is looking at you funny, number one, they're not. Number two, they can't write your story because they don't know you. Um, The job that you didn't do well, uh, touch it, feel it, let it go. Because that has nothing to do with your future. Your future lies on the other side where it feels all dark and scary that's where all the good stuff is. And so uh, trusting in that, trusting in that journey, trusting in the people that are close to you, you'll see over time that it gives you that confidence and your shoulders go back and you try a new lip and then it's just, you're off and sailing. Oh, and a good push-up mm. bra, a new lip and a Curl. good push-up bra can change Curl. a woman's Fresh life. coat of deodorant and a good Come push-up. On. Yes. That's it. Ooh. All right. That's the way to end this, but we can't end it without <laughs> doing something fun. So we end every show with rapid fire questions, and we have curated okay. the best shows, the best questions just for you. Okay. Rapid fire questions. All right. Rapid fire questions. Mary, don't think about it. I don't want you okay. to pray about it. I don't want you. I okay. want the first thing come up, come out. I'm ready. How do you psych yourself up before going on TV? Never die, you dirty devil. What is that? <laughs> you said don't think about it. Okay. It's a line from a movie, and I can't remember what movie it was, but they did a double kiss, and then they pointed uh-huh. in the mirror at themselves and said, never die, you dirty devil. Never die, you and dirty then, devil. Okay. I don't know why. We're doing that just, every Wednesday. Every okay. Wednesday, right? We get on. We're going to look at each other. Go, it has no never religious die, significance devil. whatsoever. It's just like a line from a movie. Listen, I promise. Honey, Devil's not involved. This. Devil's not involved. <laughs> And if it was, we want him to go on and die anyway. All right, here we go. He doesn't know about it. <laughs> what is the greatest song ever written? <gasps> uh, Let's Stay Together by Al Green. That's a good one. I like, what's yours? You what's a- yours? Oh, um, the Rocky theme. 
Uh-huh. Quaking. Um, that's uh, my hype or, song. Or Tina Turner's or T- okay, that's my hype song too. Or Tina Turner's simply the best. Na, 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 na. She is bad to the bone. She is yeah. straight up bad to the bone lover. When Let's Stay Together by Al Green comes on, everything else stops. Yeah. So in love with you. Do you think Let's Stay Together is a baby making song? You want? Could be. Well, but yeah. it's also like as silly as it sounds, and I know this has kind of been the theme, but like it, it applies to relationships, but it also applies to yourself. Whether good or bad, bad. happy or sad. sad. I mean, that's it. That's for yourself too. So inward mm. and outward, favorite song of all time. Love it. And it's perfect. If you could <laughs> pick a new skill in an instant, what would it be? Ooh, languages. I want to speak. Ooh. All the languages. I mean, speak Spanish, a little bit, of, uh, little German, little Spanish, broken English. Um, what about but, French? Yeah. French is, I don't French speak is French, but it's so laissez les bon temps rouler. It's so molasses y, beautiful. And yeah, it's just, I mean, I would love it. I, I have to say, too, Vietnamese is so gorgeous. It's uh, tonal, it's a very tonal language. And so it's not. I, that's the the intricacy and the engineering of languages i think is so interesting so i would love all those uh super, i would like all the languages i think i think the most interesting language and one that's you know uh, is highly highly intelligent like yeah. it, it just sounds intelligent is the southern drawl oh come on i mean <laughs> listen and there's there are different cadences to the southern drawl if you go to charleston then it's a little bit of drinking lacca on the battery um <laughs> but if you it, it's different everywhere no, in you know i'm teasing you know i'm teasing I'm in. see i don't i don't have the southern drawl that's very very educated and elevated i've got more <laughs> the hey y'all i ain't got one thing to eat when we going to when we going to walmart I love that it's plural. Walmarts, Walmarts. is plural. Everything. Targets, Walmarts, Listen. Valentine. And I say Valentines, not Valentines, Valentines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is the dumbest thing you've ever Googled? Oh. <laughs> that's a good one. That's <laughs> one is like the best. That's the best one. When we were in Ireland, a lady said to me in a pub, you remind me of someone. She showed me, a, and I'm condensing the story. She showed me a picture of Hillary Swank. And I said, Ooh. oh my gosh, thank you. So I took that as a huge compliment. So I we Googled do. myself. I pulled up a picture and I said, what about her? And the woman goes, no, not a bit. <laughs> so I think that. Googling myself and trying to get somebody to ha ha ha. What that was the dumbest thing I've ever Googled. And uh, I, I, got sh- I got shot down. And I think my husband wet his pants because my husband was like, he just lost it. Mary, yeah. I love mm-hmm. it. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes don't Google yourself. Just let it oh, be. Ever. Let it be. Never. Let it be what ever. it is. Yeah. Let it just be. They don't know you on Google and they can't okay. create you life. My mother was in church one Sunday. This is a true story. And she, the preacher, was up there preaching. You know, my mom goes to Bold Springs Baptist. She does all the cantatas, the Christmas cantatas and everything. She's really big in the church. She's, hey, one, of them, do, do. she's one of them elders, you know. And so he comes up to her and he says, Joe, I didn't realize. He said, you certainly have a testimony. She goes, oh, yes, honey, the Lord's done good work in me. And he said, I did not realize that you were in the adult entertainment industry. <laughs> it was a whole article about my mother, and it had said, you know, Kim Gravel and her sister Allison from Kim of Queens and her mother Joe, who's a, f- a famous, a former famous porn star. <laughs> porn star. I have the article. And she was like, she was like, well, I do look good. She said, I've always looked good. <laughs> Can I get a signed T-shirt or something? I didn't know we were dealing with... <laughs> Industry royalty. And she took it as a slight compliment. That's <laughs> <laughs> never Google it yourself. Okay, here Ever. we go. You could get one word tattooed onto your body. What would it be? Love. Mm. Celebrity crush. Gosh, I don't really have like a one person. I mean, there's, there's. So I love Rip. I mean, we all love Rip from Yellowstone. Well, let's just, let's just, just say that and just leave it um, there. 
I hugely <laughs> though, I think on a, on another level, Killian Murphy, have you ever seen Killian Ooh, Murphy okay. from Peaky Blinders? Yes. That's an interesting one. It's not a visual thing. It's more of a cerebral thing. I just think his um, acting and uh, he's just, he's phenomenal. And so, yeah, I would say. Well, you've got both ends right there. I think you're co- covered. Yeah. Yeah. Cowboy mm-hmm. hat and cowboy boots and then Smarty McTarty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Best comfort food in the world. My mother's oh, recipe for chicken divan. Ooh, I thought you were going to say hot dog. Mm. So, okay. Now you've got me going. I want to taste that. Mm. Chicken debate. I'll send you the recipe. Um, she used to make it when my dad was a tack officer at West Point and she would feed the cadets and they would eat it and then they would fall asleep on the floor. So we just had <laughs> look like bodies. The bodies hit the floor for real. And um, she called it cadet dinner. Last question. Um, and I just think it jumps it all up. Mary, what do you think confidence is in one word or a couple of words? What is confidence mm-hmm. to you? consistent positivity consistent positivity i mean we could expand on that in a lot of different ways right it's you have to be consistently positive with yourself you have to put yourself in scenarios that are consistently positive it's not one moment that gives you confidence that can be a step um but in order to be and live in a confident place and be a confident person, it has to be consistent. And so yeah. whether it is a mindset, whether it is putting yourself in a situation that is more positive than the one you're in now, um, it has to consistently positive. I don't know what more to say. I love you. you. I, I love you. Tune this in so to fun. everybody. It is. We need to do this more often. You're such, you're so amazing, and I love you. And y'all, check out Mary every Wednesday with me at 9 o'clock. She's got two other shows. Uh, She's all over the network. She is a powerhouse, (laughs) superstar, ride or die, girl's girl, and authentically you. I love it. You you have brought so much love to QVC. And I've said, I say it once, I say it all the time. I'm proud to say I've called you America's best girlfriend for mm-hmm. years. And we love you so much. And this is part of that consistently positive to so many of our days. You are the face of that for so many. So we love you right back. Well, right back at you, girl. We I, I love doing life with you. I Me do. Too. I love doing life with you. And and I love what you're saying. Go find people that you love doing life with and do it. That's right. That's right. Find your peace and then live it loud. Oh, that was so good. Mary is such, do you see what I'm talking about, about her authenticity, Zach? A million percent. Mary is like a breath of fresh air with Mm -hmm. ADHD. (laughs) Yeah. Well, she said she has it, but she's turned that into like, a moment for her career. And I loved all of the nuggets of, of wisdom and, and things that you can apply to your life. I, I, I'm telling you, I love the favorite thing. I, she said, she says, be your own best girlfriend, yes. be your own best friend. But this is the thing, how she just, and I like how she said, she kind of bumped into what she's doing. I think as long as we're moving forward and taking a step and another step, our purpose, our calling, what we're supposed to be doing will find us, but we won't if we're not moving forward. Like, I think we think we have to have it all together to get where we're going. And really, we got to just get where we're going. It'll all work together. Yeah. And she got to like where it's so obvious that she is where she's meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I just love her story because she's like, oh, I did this job and this job and I did this and I wasn't any good at this. And it's just it. It's not a straight line. Mm-mm, it's not a straight. Oh, uh, it's not a straight line, and it's not. It's not always an even line, uh, even playing field either. There's a lot of valleys, a lot of peaks, a lot of bumps in the road. Um, but again, if you are still drawing breath, you have a calling and purpose. And yeah. so just take that step forward and do it scared. Mm-hmm. But wherever you are right now, whether it be you know, in trauma, in uh, disappointment, in depression, in a dark place, what is beyond that is where the good stuff is. So just start moving mm-hmm. forward to that unknown because yeah. that's where yeah. the good stuff is. I love it. All right. Well, we got to have her back, Zach. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, everybody, listen, don't <laughs> listen to everything that Mary said. Take it down, soak it in. But in the, in the it, when it comes down to it, the bottom line is believe in who you are. And I'm going to leave you with this right now. Be your own best friend and level up the life you're in. All right, till next time, I'm Kim. I'm Zach. We love you. Bye. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, who let you drive? <laughs> Somebody take the cruise control off. This is someone I found on this place called the internet. I don't know oh. if you've heard of it. <laughs> I'm after write. I'm gonna write that down. Hang on. The internet. <laughs>